We're good, man. I'm Ryan Landon, and uh, it's here to bite the bullet for cancer, but I'm going to bite the bullet for fatherhood. I didn't know anything about this project until uh, maybe a week or so ago. Had a, a friend tell me about it. People come in and talk about some of their struggles and things that are going on that other people might be able to relate to. And um, I guess the reason he asked me in the first place was um, my, uh, my four-year-old son, Matic was recently diagnosed with leukemia. Um, as I thought more and more about this project, though, I realized that, to me, I guess this, this journey has been more about fatherhood than it has been about, like, cancer in the first place. Been a father for almost 12 years. Got three boys. Um, I guess there's a few times in my life where I felt like I, f I failed my kids. And I guess, to me, it was like I, I grew up in a household mom and dad and believe that, you know, you should stay together, work stuff out, put your kids to bed every night, do these traditional um, ideas of what a family looked like. Unfortunately, um, my kids' mom and I didn't have a very healthy relationship. We, uh, we haven't been together for a long time now, but we definitely get along better and can put stuff aside when it really matters to just parent kids and get along. And I mean, I think we've both offered the kids kind of the healthiest situation possible since. But I mean, as a father, I felt like a total failure. I mean, I felt like it was, it's, it's been my job to provide for the kids. It's my job to hold a family together. It's my job to know what's going on. It's my job to protect them. It's, there's all these, um, there's all, there's all these expectations, I guess, of, you know, what being a father looks like. And yeah, so I felt like I, I totally failed my kids in that area. And I mean, it's, um, I don't feel like that now. I feel like, you know, we've done things in a really like healthy way and everything's moved in the right direction. But where I'm going with this is, um, you know, you think as a father, you just know everything that's going on with your kids. You, you think you know if they're healthy, if they're not healthy, if they're happy, if they're not happy. Um, you just, you think that you know everything. And um, I guess it's been a really weird journey the last month. It's just completely changed my life. You know, maybe a month ago now, I was hanging out at home with the kids. It was on the weekend, um, it was later in the day. It's before bed, I had crawled into bed, and I was just laying down, I was just watching some hunting videos on TV, and my youngest son, Matic, enjoys watching the videos with me. So we were, uh, we were enjoying some videos in bed, laying there, and uh, he was cuddled up right on my shoulder and just breathing in my face. And um, just at the time, I was like, it just seemed really, it just seemed kind of like an eye-opening moment. It was just like, you know, I kind of had the thought go through my head, you know, that this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna last forever, and you know, kids are gonna grow up. And um, yeah, I remember at the time I I took a photo of it, and I just I made a post on Instagram or whatever, and um, I had put a little blurb about, you know, like getting a crappy night's sleep, getting kicked all night. You know, a kid, you know, sweaty, glued to you, breathing in your face. I knew I was going to get a, a <laughs> not an awesome sleep that night. But I had just kind of made a blurb just saying, you know, like, you never know when it's going to be the last time. And, you know, your kids grow up and you these opportunities um, are only around for so long. So, you know, just enjoy them. And I remember going to bed and I, I remember getting a crappy sleep. I remember getting kicked all night. I remember waking up with his little face, an inch from mine, just breathing right in my face. And I just remember just being like, just totally okay with it. And um, it was a really odd time because at the time of making that post, it was in, it was in my mind that um, my kids were healthy, everything was fine. 
you know, I, it was just, they were going to become, you know, they were going to grow old and get too cool for their dad. Um, it never, it never crossed my mind once, um, of what was actually going on. And I guess what was actually going on is, um, Maddox had had a little bit of a fever on and off. I, he's a four-year-old kid. He runs around. He wrestles with his brothers. He's reckless. He does all these things. And um, I guess I just thought he was just being a, uh, just being a sweaty little kid. Like that's what they did. He he got sweaty. You he'd want to have a nap, or I mean, he would never want to have one. But you'd get him to lay down, and he'd doze off and have a sleep and he'd get up and after half an hour of laying down he'd you know he wouldn't be sweating anymore he'd be fine and I, just, I never thought anything of it and I guess like as a father as a parent as anything I mean you think you just know every single thing that's going on in your kid's life you don't question it and um, I remember his mom had brought it up to me a couple times she said like hey like does he seem like he has a fever going on is there something off of him and I was like well I don't th I don't think so like I think he's just I think he's just running around being sweaty there's some flus going around there's just it's kind of crappy season for us stuff's lingering I said maybe he's getting sick and then he kind of fights it off and then he kind of gets it again a little bit and to me it wasn't a concern at all and then um I guess I'll uh fast forward to um the next weekend I was, I went out hunting with a buddy for the day, had a really awesome day. And I got back and I was sitting down, I was making some supper and there was, I remember getting, there was a message on my phone and it said something about that from his mom saying that she thought that he had maybe picked up a parasite somewhere or something like that and it was causing a fever. And she had sent me some instructions for some medication to take to deal with some sort of parasite. So it's like, okay, not a big deal. Kids do gross stuff, get into gross things, it's possible. So I never thought much of it. And then I checked my phone maybe an hour later and I realized that I had missed a call from her. And then I realized that I had also missed a call from her boyfriend. And so I was a little bit like confused. It's would be it'd be odd it's just completely out of sorts for both of them to send me to to message me or to call me like that unless there's something wrong so i called her boyfriend back and um he informed me at that time that they were at the hospital so i said like ask them what's going on and um he let me know that maddock didn't have a parasite but in fact, they did a blood test and they found out they had some blast cells in his blood and was diagnosed with leukemia. Um, I remember just being like complete disbelief. Like it's just not anything that I had ever expected. It's not something I ever thought about I felt like maybe I'd been just naive the whole time like how how could I not how could something like this not cross my mind I mean I guess you just when I think about cancer and I think about these things I I mean I associate them with people that live like extremely unhealthy lifestyles I associate them with um, older people I associate them with people who have like lived a life I, I just, I don't, it never, it was never something that I associated with, with kids. I mean, not four-year-old kids. Um, and if I had, it was like, that's the disease that, or that's the condition, or that's the, that's the unfortunate thing that happens to someone else's kids. It just, it never crossed my mind that it's something that could happen to my, my own kids. And... I guess kind of going back to the like feeling like failure as a father. I mean, in that time, I felt like I felt like I had failed my kids. I felt like it's like my job to 
protect my kids from everything. It's my job to make sure that they're happy, to make sure they're taken care of. And, you know, you suddenly, you question, you question everything. You question, you know, what you do with them. You question what you're feeding them. You question, you question every, every single thing that goes into taking care of kids. You question it because you wonder, like, why could this be my fault? Like, is this, is this something that I did? Like, I mean, it just, I don't think that it's any different for his mom, or I don't think it, it's maybe any different for any mother out there, father out there, a- anyone who cares for them. You just, I think you just question it. And I guess it just kind of started a whole other journey. Like, so that night he got transported to Edmonton Hospital, and I went and picked up the older two boys and had taken them home with me so his mom could be at Edmonton uh, with him. And um, I can honestly say it was the worst sleep I've ever had. Um, I've never in my life went to bed and had just like an absolutely overwhelming amount of fear that I might wake up in the morning and have one last child. Like, it was just um, it's completely unimaginable. Um, and then the other side is, is just still providing for the other two boys as a father. Like, it was my job to be strong for them and having to, like, set my own kind of emotions aside and, you know, I guess be tough and still be a father and still do those things, but be in this weird place of like feeling absolutely horrible what's going on feeling like a failure um all all of these just overwhelming amount of emotions and then not only that but thinking back to a post that i had made you know realizing that when i had made that post you know the post was about um just enjoying the moment because your kids are going to grow up but then it crossed my mind that maybe the post was about that maybe you don't know how long someone's going to be around for. And like, it was like, it was a really, really scary moment in my life. Just not, not knowing, um, just not knowing like what the outcome of this whole situation would be. Um, yeah, I just completely changed my perspective. Uh, I almost feel like speechless in a sense of how to even express what that um, feels like. So I guess, yeah, I guess I'm biting the bullet for, I guess it was to talk about kind of a, I was asked to bite the bullet to talk about a journey about dealing with cancer, but I guess I find myself dealing with more of a journey of just fatherhood and what's taking place. So it's been a few weeks now and things are looking better. Super rough time in the hospital. There's lots of ups and downs. Um, It's just like an absolutely overwhelming experience. And I guess it's just completely blown my mind as as an adult, you know, I remember being in high school and you feel like you have a ton of friends and you have this huge support group around you and all these things. And I remember like adults then telling me they're like, you're gonna have five friends when you're an adult. You're not gonna have all these friends anymore. And I thought that was just a completely bizarre thing. And as an adult, I realized I feel like there's about five people that I spend a lot of time with. And there's a lot of really great people, but they're acquaintances and they're friends, but you don't see them on an everyday um, basis like you did back years ago. But this situation just like really brought light to how many people are out there that are just like um, just willing to drop everything. Like it's been absolutely mind blowing and overwhelming how many people take are willing to take time out of their own lives, away from their own families. Um, just the sacrifice that people are willing to make for someone, and like this, the sense of community has been. Um, it's just been completely overwhelming. And then I guess the other side of it is, is there's like this pride that's 
um, you know, like as a father, it's, you know, it's my job to provide for these kids. And then you find yourself in this situation where you're away from work or you're out of work because you need to be at a hospital. You're trying to juggle all these things and people are making offers and offering to, you know, make some donations to help you out and food and rides and all these things and you kind of find yourself in this crazy predicament where you have to accept help from other people and I don't know this whole situation just completely changed my life I mean I'm someone who like gets uncomfortable at Christmas because people giving me things is makes me uncomfortable but now I'm in this position where people are making uh, massive sacrifices and making extremely generous offers to me and um, just like finding myself at the place where I'm like ha just have to admit that like I need some help like this is this is a really tough situation and um, yeah it's just been like absolutely the most humbling crazy situation. I never thought in a million years that I would be in this situation. I never thought in a million years I'd be accepting help from other people like this. Um, yeah, I guess it's just such a process to go through. I mean, I are still dealing with, um, like I said, this is only a couple of weeks old now, so we're still kind of dealing with the middle of it, but um, it's been a really wild journey. And you know, I think the the other side of it too has really changed my perspective is there's so many amazing people and there's so many tough people out there. There's so many like absolutely incredibly tough people. The stuff that people have shared with me and the vulnerability that people have had and the stuff that like just everyday people that you would never expect, the kind of stuff that they're going through is, uh, it's it's just mind blowing. And people continuously ask me, like, just, you know, over and over again, hey, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything you can do? You know, this constantly, this, um, this offer. And, and, you know, like, I think that maybe the best piece of advice or, like, the best thing, the best reply to that would just be to tell someone to just, man, just, like, the people in your life, like, if you have kids, hug your kids. If you have if you have good friends, like hug your friends. Let people know that you care. Like reach out. Don't don't take stuff for granted. I mean, I went from a place of feeling like, you know, it wasn't even possible that I would be outliving my kids to a place of complete fear that my kids, my son might never make it home from the hospital. And um, we ended up having like really good news last weekend. He, last Saturday, he ended up coming home and he's spending some time as an outpatient now. Um, he still has a ton of appointments to go to. He's still got chemotherapy for at least another three years. Um, it's completely changed my life. It's changed my perspectives hugely. I absolutely adore my kids. Um, I guess I just, you know, it's easy as a parent to be tired and wiped out. And when your kids ask you to do something, you know, you say, next time. And um, I guess for me, I just kind of decided to make it my goal that when my kids ask me to do something, the answer is just, the answer is yes. And it might not be this second, but if they want to go and they want to go in and do something, go fishing, go hunting, go for a hike, go camping, do any of these things that we all enjoy. Um, just trying to just decide that the answer is yes to that and just make a plan and have that follow through and just enjoy that time and not take it for granted, not take it for granted that kids are growing up or the fact that your kid's health is, you have healthy kids. I mean, I remember people just saying that, you know, they'd be thankful that everyone's just healthy, but it never really meant, um, meant much to me until now, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, I guess I'm, 
I guess I'm just kind of looking forward to see what this journey of fatherhood through um, this next part of my life, dealing with a child with cancer and just like how humbling that can be and just having to accept um, help from other places. It's just, uh, yeah, it's crazy. There's still like a surreal, um, doesn't feel real every day. It kind of feels like this thing in the back of your mind where you're, um, I guess it's like waiting for it to be over, but it's not really the case.